Hello, this is Jeff Murrow, and I want to welcome you to True Texas History, where today uh, we are going to talk about the Battle of Nacogdoches, because it was on this day, August the 2nd, 1832, that the Battle of Nacogdoches occurred. Now, uh, some people refer to it as a skirmish. Uh, uh, it seems more skirmish-like than battle, but here's what happened. Um, okay, at this time, uh, there was starting to be some unrest uh, between the colonists and the Mexican authorities. Now, let me go ahead and point out one of the things that uh, you often hear in uh, some of the modern history. Um, and that is that uh, these Texas colonists were rebels and they were invaders. You know, you'll hear stuff like that. Keep in mind, to be a colonist in Texas, you had to swear allegiance to Mexico and be a Mexican citizen. So these colonists were Mexican citizens at the time. And they had already had uh, the first Anahuac disturbance. And so uh, there was trouble brewing. Uh, there were a couple of Mexican authorities that uh, were a pain in the side of the Texan colonists. One was uh, John Bradburn, and the other was uh, Colonel Piedras, who was in charge of the garrison there at Nacogdoches. And uh, there were a couple of things uh, that were going on. Uh, one is that Colonel Piedras uh, had attempted to confiscate the weapons of the colonists and get them to turn it in. And Texans don't take kindly to when people want to take away their weapons. The other thing that was going on was uh, there was a push to try to get the Mexican authorities to declare whether or not they were supportive of the Constitution of 1824. In other words, the colonists wanted uh, the Mexican officials to uh, declare whether or not they were going to support the Constitution. And Piedras, uh, at that time, uh, had not declared, and he did not say that he would uh, support the Constitution. Now, keep in mind, if that happened in America, you know, if you uh, had a, a local military officer who did not swear allegiance to the Constitution, you wouldn't know what to do. You know, here's somebody trying to take your guns and they won't declare uh, one way or another whether or not they support the Constitution. Uh, and that's a dilemma of the colonists. Uh, now, some reports say that the Mexican garrison was uh, numbering about 300. Uh, some sources say 500. I tend to <coughs> lean in the direction of 300. Well, the Texians went ahead and camped on the east side of town. They went ahead and uh, they were going to try to provoke an attack. And as they got closer into the town, um, they finally did uh, provoke an attack. And the Mexican cavalry came out, uh, charged into the, you know, into the Texian lines. The Texians uh, essentially... Uh, initially fall back to lure them in closer than they opened fire with all their rifles and uh, the Mexican cavalry retreated. Um, after that action, uh, a local merchant by the name of, Adol of Adolphus Steele, who you will hear his name uh, again in the story of Texas independence because the Feast of Liberty, he was the one that uh, hosted that and he hosted Davy Crockett when he came through town. Davy Crockett, excuse me. But Adolphus Stern went ahead and showed the Texians how to uh, outflank the Mexican forces that were holed up in the old stone fort. And the Texians went ahead and uh, took positions. And the Mexicans occasionally tried to come out, but anytime they stuck their heads out, uh, the Texas marksmen would go ahead uh, and shoot them. And uh, they did... The Mexican forces did launch uh, one sortie. The Texans caught him. Uh, and since the commander had shown that he was uh, friendly to the Texas cause, uh, they went ahead and let him go. 
Uh, he had a history of being friendly to the Texas Cows, going back to the Fredonian Rebellion. So keep in mind, uh, these little events do play into each other. Um, but overnight, uh, between the August 2nd and 3rd, the uh, Mexican forces went ahead and left the town. And uh, at that point, uh, the town be essentially became uh, Texian territory in the um, there was no more garrison there. Now, this was important for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, they uh, essentially chased the Mexican forces out of town. But keep in mind, at that time in Texas, if you were coming from the United States, the first major city you would come to was often Nacogdoches uh, due to the way that the trails uh, led into Texas. Uh, unless you came by sea, that's a whole other matter. But if you were coming by land, it was probably going to be Nacogdoches. So uh, this put this key uh, gateway city uh, in control of the Texians from then on uh, into the Battle of Secession from Mexico. Uh, but today is the anniversary of that battle. Uh, now, another interesting antidote uh, as the Texians were getting ready to uh, charge the old stone fort and to take control uh, one of the Texian leaders uh, told his men whoever uh, you know goes into the fort first and takes it uh, you know I'll see to it that they get uh, that land and uh, that property and that's what happened a fellow by the name of John Maximilian went ahead and took the fort and that's how he ended up uh, getting a claim on it now it was also interesting to note that uh, one of the Texas leaders that was involved in the Battle of Nacogdoches was none other than James Bowie, uh, who we'll see pop up in future Texas episodes. I uh, hope you enjoyed this today. Feel free to give it a thumbs up. Uh, and until next time, this is Jeff Murrow wishing you via con Dios, my friends. Goodbye.